If you could, Harvey, let's start the applause and we'll bring on Ryan Kenny as the next act. If you could, after three, one, two, three, start the applause. Please bring it up and welcome on stage, Mr. Ryan Kenny. Uh, I suffer from a crippling social anxiety. <laughs> so this is going to be just as fun for me as it currently is for you. As you could tell if you have eyes, I was bullied at school. <laughs> and at work. And at home. And... Between the beatings, my mother used to say to me, Ryan, you need to get yourself a hobby. So I did. I took up poetry. Didn't help. <laughs> However, I'm going to relive some of those best moments of my life by performing some of those poems. Thank you. <laughs> this first poem is called Pauline. The reason why will become very obvious very early. Pauline. <laughs> Gasped. She'd never seen a cock so big. <laughs> she blushed as she stared at Robert's prize winning chicken. Whose knob was enormous. Uh, most of my poems are based on true stories and the rest and the rest I've just written and this one is about myself actually but I've changed my own name to protect my own identity <laughs> Tim's mother called him help I've fallen down the stairs he screamed onto his answer phone so Tim called her back each day for four days. No answer. So Tim assumed she no longer needed help. She died. Uh, I've got a girlfriend. No one gives a fucking fuck. Uh, but I consider her to be a bit of a wag. Uh, she stinks of dog food. And, <laughs> and uh, we went to the casino the other day and I wrote a poem about that. It's called Sandra. Sandra loved the casino. She adored roulette and swooned over the free soft drinks. But she hated, despised, loathed Black Jack. Fucking racist. Uh, <laughs> I've got a mother, no one gives a flying fuck, uh, and cause she said to me, Ryan, because I can never be bothered coming to any of your gigs, how do you normally do your set? I said, well, I'll start with the latest poem I've written, and then I won't worry back till I've done the entire anthology. So this is poem 247. <laughs> is that your card? Would have been good, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> Stacy went bowling. It took her ages to find the right ball, but finally she found one. The weight was fine, but her fingers kept getting lodged in little holes. And instead of admitting she had chubby little man fingers, <laughs> she bowled anyway, severely breaking her wrists in three places. Uh, this is poem 246, uh, and it requires some acting, so bear with me while I get into character. Thank you. <laughs> Two gay melons try to marry. No, no, screen the pineapples. You can't elope. Uh, <laughs> I, I often perform a poetry in front of household names, such as uh, mum and dad. And 
once I had an opportunity to perform in front of celebrities on a boat, and I remember Brian Blessed just sat in the corner, and he bellowed up at me, he just went, do you just do poems? <laughs> I said, no, Brian, I'm also really good at impressions. <laughs> and while I was on this boat, the captain said to me, quick, win a sea battle, get the cannonballs. I said, we've run out of cannonballs. He said, fine, use the coconuts. I did. We looked across the battlefield, desiccated. <laughs> it's a can of coconut. Oh, oh. Sometimes my girlfriend leaves me little notes within my uh, set, and this one just says, isn't it strange that all broken glass Tastes exactly like blood. <laughs> uh, I've been accused by some comedians about being too static on stage. I know, shocking. But uh, to, uh, to prove them wrong. This next poem is a relatable poem. Peter had been sat in Steve's house for 30 minutes and he still didn't know the Wi-Fi password. Steve was a poor host, so Peter killed him, but didn't know how to get rid of the body as he still couldn't access the Wi-Fi. Uh, right, I think one more poem. Cool, no one... <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, I don't normally know how to end my set, so round of applause. <laughs> I still don't know how to end my set. Uh, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Dan.